Hello, and thank you for joining this peer exchange titled Optimizing Infection Control to Improve Outcomes of Allogeneic Stem Cell Transplant. Infection is a serious, potentially life-threatening complication for immunocompromised patients, particularly those who undergo myeloablative therapy and allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. In this peer exchange panel discussion, my colleagues and I will discuss the latest information regarding optimizing infection control to improve outcomes in transplant patients. I am Dr. Harry Erba. I am a professor of internal medicine and director of the Hematologic Malignancy Program at the University of Alabama at Birmingham in Birmingham, Alabama. Joining me today are my distinguished colleagues, Dr. Roy Chamali, professor of medicine, director of infection control section, and director of clinical virology in the Department of Infectious Disease at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And to my left, Dr. Mark Levis, program leader of hematologic malignancies and bone marrow transplant at the Sidney Kimmel Comprehensive Cancer Center and professor of oncology at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's begin. So, Mark, I'd like to start with you. Um, describe for me why there is a need um, for um, infection control in patients receiving high-dose uh, chemotherapy, uh, ablative therapy, and undergoing stem cell transplant. Uh, well, uh, it should be rem remembered that uh, while the patient is frequently in remission, uh, going to an, into an allogeneic transplant or a stem cell transplant, what it took to get them there is another matter entirely. They almost certainly have uh, experienced either a bacterial infection, an invasive mold infection, a reactivation of a virus during the journey even to get to that point. And have we truly uh, fully eliminated or erad eradicated that, uh, that infection prior to the transplant? Probably not. So now they're going to go into that transplant procedure and become even more profoundly immunocompromised and now in fact in new ways. Uh, typically affecting the T-cell compartment. So uh, it's a whole new, um, unfortunately, opportunity for these infections to hit. So this, is, this in fact, uh, without paying attention to this, uh, you just would never get these patients through safely. And so clearly, the patients coming to you for stem cell transplant are, are quite a mixture um, of uh, prior disease uh, states, therapies, other infections, age, comorbidities. In your mind, is there some way that you risk stratify these patients, and does that affect uh, your prophylactic measures? Of course. So, uh, in fact, even starting, the, the patients who have had a prior fungal infection or specific infection, I, we typically will consult our infectious disease colleagues to say, okay, this patient's already had aspergillosis, uh, pulmonary or where, at, where, where have you. How are we going to prevent this from recurring? What's our strategy going into the transplant? So just that alone, a, a, a prior established infection. Second, the degree to which they got uh, the, that you had to treat them to get them to the point where they're going to undergo transplant. So frequently we might choose transplant for a second remission or somebody who we've gotten back into remission after they've relapsed. That person has already had multiple rounds of intense immunosuppression. So they're at higher risk. Uh, finally, uh, and this pertains speci specifically to uh, the acute leukemia patients, going into transplant with any minimal residual disease predicts for a poorer outcome from allogeneic transplant, but interestingly, what many people don't realize, it's often due to an increased death rate during the transplant, specifically from infections. Hmm. Not relapse. No. That's interesting. Yeah. If we had more time, we'd talk more about that today, but I want to move on to other topics. Now, when I think about my patients that um, I'm not a transplanter, as you know, and I send to transplant, the, the things I'm most concerned about uh, are fungal infections and CMV. The, these are the problems that they seem to have. But I don't want to forget about the need, uh, the bacterial infections that these patients may also get. So is there a bacterial prophylaxis that you use in patients undergoing transplant? I'll let you answer that, Mark. So at our institution, this, of course, was a, a matter of intense debate, uh, and it went on for, for months. I was a part of that debate. Uh, certainly, gram-negative rods need to be prophylaxed against, and everybody could agree that a fluoroquinolone was your best choice there for that. 
It was the question of whether or not we could get away with just a penicillin and even which penicillin we would use, and, and that I'll defer to our uh, infectious disease colleague to, to come down on the answer for that. So certainly just bacterial, uh, both gram positive and gram negatives need to be covered. This, this is going to date me, but I remember the days when we gave oral non-absorbable antibiotics to, to oh, yes. cleanse the gut. Do we do, we do that anymore? Uh, no, actually, uh, it's not a, a routine practice at the present time. And the reason is first, uh, the rate of resistance by doing you know this kind of strategy is pretty high. Uh, unfortunately, the bacteria adapt uh, rather quickly to any strat that they are exposed to and they become resistant uh, to this uh, non-absorbable an an antibi antibiotics. I would add also, you know, for bacterial prophylaxis, uh, you have to know what's going on in your institution, what kind of uh, multidrug resistant organism uh, that you encounter the most, and that's how sometimes you base your prophylactic regimen. Although most of us will uh, still recommend fluoroquinolones because you wanna uh, prevent mainly uh, strep viridans from uh, in patient with oral mucositis from conditioning regimen for their allogenic transplant uh, or enterobacteria say as well uh, when they have most probably GI ulceration from their uh, also chemotherapy. Uh, so uh, they still work pretty well, although we see some breakthrough infection, unfortunately, because of the resistance. Uh, for and that's becoming a real problem. We've yeah. had several patients develop multidrug resistant gram negative rods where literally we have a conference on each patient. What's yes. our strategy for yes. preventing recurrence of this organism during transplant? So it's gotten very complicated, obviously. Um, but let's